I was born in September on a holy occasion in the night. But to think that I'm special when everyone should be equal isn't right. When all the plants and animals, including Homo sapiens, from stardust we unfold. And I gaze upon that sky at night, and I fear our own ancestors, a universal message told. Welcome to life. Fathers, they stick to a condition, was the fight to be better than the other by any means necessary. Use it, might. It took us over 10,000 years to figure out the training, riches more than war. Fashion, the Nazar multilateral goal. Welcome to life. Welcome to life.
be asked to put on your dancing shoes more than once tonight, okay? This is gonna be one of those times. It's a good warm up. Are you warmed up? No, no, not yet. Are you warmed up? No, 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 not enough. Okay, I feel it. One, two. How we sort of started was it was just a bunch of friends that you know enjoyed playing music together. Uh, we used to go to the studio, uh, jam some of the songs from our favorite bands or heroes. Um, we used to play in each other's houses. Yeah, that's true. Like we used you, to go to you each, come to my house, yeah. I go to your place. That's true. Uh, we go to Edward's place. Yep. Um, and we would, place. We would swap all the instruments. instruments absolutely. Uh, so nobody ever just played one song, one instrument. It was always. He Different knew things. the drums best for this song, yep. and then I knew the drums maybe for another song, and we would swap instruments. So that kind of made us multi instrumentalists in um, kind of dipping your toes in the water kind of way. And of course, <laughs> you know, when you're always a small time, you know, uh, musician growing up, you always want to come up with band names. And oh, you always man. have some interesting band names. We came up with terrible band names. They weren't very good. Probably okay. the worst. Worst band name. Worst band name. Okay, on the count of three. One, One, two, two three. three. Check and balls. balls. That's right. We were called check and balls. They lasted about a month. One show, and then we thought we should not use it anymore. <laughs> we made a big banner. I still have that banner. We you made still a banner. We, we made a big <laughs> oh banner. God. It has just check and balls written on yeah. this big banner at the back of the, the bar when we when I we played there. I think it was maybe about two years later that we started becoming a bit better at coming up with band names. Yep. That's when we came up with the uh, Killer Protocol. This next one, we want to give you the good stuff, even from the get-go. Uh, this goes out to all of you beautiful people. This is Julita.
Six years ago, uh, we were on this uh, TV show. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I think that's where most of you guys uh, know us from. Uh, and six years ago, we played this version of uh, this song, this next song, on Versus. Do you think they'll get it? Do you, What's think, that? Do you think they'll know it? Uh, I think they'll never know. <laughs> Zombies I never know How things tend to end the so Always in the waiting line Never the winning kind It's always I never know How things tend to end the so With the sexy style Hey girl, yeah, you're driving wild Banging bodies on a Saturday Oh, twist the little games you play On the arm of a Neanderthal Sitting in his fancy car Hey girl, wanna get me My fire's gonna set you Free, 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 free I've known Shaq for a long time. We were at school together, I think, uh, like <laughs> high school, I think. And uh, we actually played in a band together in school. Um, but then I went to uni uh, for a while. Uh, he went off and, and he had his own thing. Uh, but we kept in touch a lot. Uh, I wrote music on my own and sent it to him. He would work on music to, on his side and send it to me. We'd kind of work, collaborate on a bunch of stuff together. And, you know, he had. Uh, I was playing in a band already, but this time band, right? with uh, Fuad actually. Yeah. Uh, and I was in a band with Gail, just the two of us. And at this point, it was juggling, for me personally, juggling three bands, and for him, juggling two bands. It just did not make sense, actually. So one day I just kind of said, hey, instead of having all these different bands, let's just meet up with Fuad, let's see how it goes. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, so he took me one night, he's like, you gotta meet this guy. I was like, okay, who's this guy? He's like, you just come. And uh, he brought me to this. We're meeting him at 11 p.m. and I'm like, who are we meeting at 11 p.m.? Okay. And Dodgiest uh, guy in the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was, it was an interesting first meeting. I remember before going, hey, what's up? And that was pretty much it. Uh, but we hung out and then that same night we went to the studio. Yep. Uh, that same night when, when we you know, said, hey, you know what? Let's just go to the studio and see what happens. And uh, yeah, it was re pretty, pretty we cool. We had a good time and the music was not bad too. I'm 
batalla perderá Si apa yang menghapuskan Hati nering nanggusan Si api yang menenokan Sedangkan kau yang ku sayang Telah pergi dariku Dengan cinta Di sana, di sisi Tuhan Yang Isa Fikiran jadi tak tentu kerana kamu siang malam. Bila
So I was browsing through this online music forum and I stumbled upon an ad by Fuad looking for a guitarist for his band Kyoto Protocol, which I happened to see a week before that um, during uh, a battle of the band show. And when I heard they played Pussycat, I, I thought, man, th this sounds like nothing I've heard before from a local band. So I thought, okay, just answer the ad, go for the audition. Uh, they asked me to prepare a uh, few songs from KP. So we jammed, we had a lot of fun jamming. And then all of a sudden they stopped, they asked me, okay, um, play us a song which you know, like not from KP. So I played uh, Highway to Hell by ACDC. <laughs> And honestly, you don't have to be a fan of rock and roll. Everybody knows that song. And immediately we knew, this is the guy. And our first show, I remember, was Rock the World. It was a very interesting show, I must say. It was a whole lot of fun, but the beginning of the show was very interesting because we started early-ish because we were a new band, but we had to start the show without anyone in the crowd because the front gate hasn't opened yet. So we thought, okay, just start playing and have fun anyway. And then after our first, our first two songs, then we saw that they let, finally let, let the crowd in. Um, so yeah, like, after that, the show went really well. Everyone had a lot of fun. The crowd was enjoying it. Yeah, it was very good. So yes, this band started 10 years ago, but it was in the making long before that. And this was one of the first songs that I ever wrote. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Now You're Gone.
I started writing music in 2006, probably after a bad breakup. Those are how everyone starts writing songs, I believe. And uh, back then, I think we were harnessing the power of the internet. It's been such a feature in Kill Protocol as a band. I think we would not be where we are today if we didn't have the internet to help us, or the tools behind the internet at least. And um, those are when those early songs like Now You're Gone, which today everyone remembers as the Fuad running song because of the music video. Uh, it was written in 2006, even before Kiro Protocol was formed. Uh, Shaq and I never parted, even though we were miles apart. We were always sending each other our demos and stuff like that. And I used to send him what were some early forms of Kiro Protocol songs. And then he would send them back with his editions and some were beautiful, like for example, Forever, amazing what he did with the uh, uh, additional guitar lines on that. Some were downright quite hilarious when he tried to play drums without a metronome to a song called um, Oh No. So the name of the song is Oh No. Just never saw the light of day. Uh, perhaps uh, that funny mangled demo that he sent back was the was the nail in the, in the coffin for oh no. <laughs> but, you know, putting this whole exercise together, a 10th anniversary concert, it's, to say it's a walk down memory lane is, is an understatement. This is a combination of my life's work as, as a songwriter, our evolution as a band, our sound, our music, and the evolution of the humans behind the music, all laid bare for everyone to see.
I'm actually not supposed to talk at this transition, <laughs> but I feel like I need to address some people who really helped us feel confident in the music that we were doing. I think over the past 10 years, our music has changed quite a lot, but it's always, uh, there's some faces in the crowd, uh, you know who you are. This next song, we were always afraid of playing it live because it was something quite different, but something that came from the heart. This song is called One Step. One step forward, two steps back One wrong move and I can't react And it's one wrong word and I can't redact Hyperbole, just plain fast And if I grip tighter, green stay slip The hands of time through the open fingers And I said I love you, the more we hate And I pull back, re and stay Cause it's one step forward, two steps back just another song or a simple dance Wide awake or in a trance Doesn't seem to matter, it's happenstance Cause it's one step forward or two steps back I'm really trying when you say you can't find
how did I join the band? I just want to set the record straight. Uh, they were the ones who approached me, okay? And I think uh, they were in a bit of a fix because they were going to launch their first ever album, an album, uh, and they didn't have a drummer. So Shaq and Gail uh, called me up and they wanted to have a meeting. And it was so urgent that they came to see me on a day when I was having another show with my, with my then band, right? He was like, oh, I'm a sound check. It's okay, come down. No, no, I'm a sound check. No, no, come down. We got to talk. And uh, they were very formal about it. And it was, it was implied that this wasn't like some permanent thing, you know. They just needed somebody to fill in for that show. And uh, that's how they presented it. And of course, I was I was up for it because I had actually seen uh, them play a couple of times, and and I secretly wanted to be in this band. But I still remember on the album launch itself. Uh, I think it was the first or second song uh, that we were playing from our album. Um, he, I think, got nervous, or he maybe went like you know, got, mind went blank for a second, and he screwed up a few note, a few beats, and. Because of that, you could tell the rest of that song was a bit nervous. And I remember Fuad turning around and, says, and said to him, just take a deep breath. Just take a breath. And I remember everybody was still screaming like, yeah, good job, good song. He just turned around, take a breath, take a breath. And you can see Sean going, and, and he did. And poof, spotless after that. Absolutely spotless till the end. It wasn't until the show day, though, when I really realized what these guys were about. Because they had pretty much... Uh, set up the entire show themselves. One person was in charge of marketing, somebody was in charge of, uh, you know, the, the back line. And as, as a band, they had all come together and like, like edited videos themselves for the backdrop visuals. And people showed up, it was a full house. And uh, I decided I need to be a permanent fixture in this band. So at all costs, I wanted to win their hearts over. Nine years later, um, I think I've achieved that. And with our powers combined, uh, we are called Kyoto Protocol. This is the time for the Adi Adi to realize what it was like 11 years ago in Havana on Changkat. <laughs> this song is called Mosquito.
I guess you could say it all started one night. Um, I was at a bar with a friend and we were watching a live band at this place. The owner came over and had a chat with me and you know, he asked me, you know, how do you like the music here and stuff and we, we got talking about music that we liked and we connected on, a, on the level that we both actually were big fans of grunge. And when I told him I had a band, which at this point was a band that played in a jamming studio or each other's houses, he said, I can't pay you, um, but I can tell the house band, don't play that night, and you guys come and play a grunge tribute. I thought it was a good deal. <laughs> Little did I know, but yeah, I thought it was a good deal. I mean, like, you know, we, we didn't know this guy. He didn't know how good we were. He took a chance on us. And this kept on for the next two to three years. And as time went by, we started throwing in some originals in there. And that sort of was the turning point for us because you know they would come up and say, hey, that's a cool song. You have a CD, do you have an album out? Or do you have somewhere where I can listen to it? And because we had done so many different shows at different places, uh, doing competitions, our name had got out. And somebody had finally approached us and said, we would love to do an album with you. And that album became uh, an album. That was the first one, the White Album. We kept the attention of all uh, the spectators that we had, whether it be one, or whether it be a hundred, or much later, you know, whether it was a thousand, two thousand, whatever it was, we always made sure that the performance or the energy that we gave that performance was always a hundred percent, never less. This one's called Dispensable. It's from Catch These Men.
10 years, we're still alive. It feels to me like everything was made possible because we are a band based out of Kuala Lumpur, actually. Um, the scene was alive from as long as I can remember. Um, I actually had seen um, a band play live for the first time when I was in Form 1 or when I was 13 years old in secondary school. 
Uh, and it pretty much grew in momentum since then. Um, our Teachers' Day was basically a rock show in school every year. The teachers were supportive of it. Uh, every other person had a guitar or a drum set. Because of a scene that was so alive, there were so many avenues for bands in KL. And that really was the stepping stone for bands here to be able to explore and reach a larger audience. Uh, of course, the internet kicked in right, you know, just at the right time. And before we knew it, someone had seen a recording of our performance from one of these venues. And we started getting invitations to play in Singapore. Uh, one thing led to another, and that's how we ventured out of the country. That's how we went and played as far as on a beach in Goa. You know, so I will forever be grateful for Kuala Lumpur and the opportunities that we got from playing music here. Kale, yeah, man, I really love you. And I'll pay a dime All the people don't come to mind Cause everybody's short of time In the knees short is a guy Motherfuckers gotta know the lines Motherfuckers gotta know the lines We're paying more You'd rather buy a flashy car But stay really, really far Take this moment to introduce the band. On the drums, we got Shanji ready. <laughs> On the bass, we have Shaquille Bashir. <laughs> On electric guitar, the handsome Harry Hanifa. And on the keyboards, Gail Oliveres. Remember how I said there was more than one time you're gonna be asked to dance? This is it. This is it, okay? No more warm ups, let's go!
After we released an album in 2011, things started to pick up for the band, definitely. That's when we got a lot of recognition. Exactly, you yeah. Know, social media yeah. uh, grew. Big grew. time. Our numbers yeah, grew. Exponentially. They w wanted more. That's something that we've sort of felt a, really, a lot of pressure on. Right. We were going for interviews with radio, uh, with TV, with magazines. Coming on the cover of magazines called yeah. being called uh, what Kale's hottest band. First question: When's your next album coming? Exactly. Out? I mean, it's 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 crazy. You know, they they, they want to know about the past, but they want to know what's coming up next. Yeah. So we felt the pressure of needing to put something out, um, which led to Catch These Men. Now, Catch These Men was very simply said some old songs that we had that didn't make an album, but we knew we wanted to release. And we put it together and, you know, we felt proud. Yeah, felt right at the time. Yeah. We thought it was a good package to, to be released to the, to the audience at the yeah. time in 2015. But... but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess in hindsight, you know, when you listen to the mm. album, I think it was maybe about a year or yeah. six months, a year and a half later, you know, you start to think, huh, could we have done better? Yeah, you know? exactly. There's that and realization of, like, yeah. oh, maybe we could have done something different there, you know, you know. Correct. Uh, I think Fuad wrote this song in 2008. It's never been released. We did a video for it this year. It's one of our few love songs. It's one of our few love songs. It is our only Valentine's Day song. The heart of Valentine's Day I gave it to you with both arms I gave it back and it was broken There is no warranty for love I try to bother to think about the sacrifice We're behind the gift For the fact that crappy food's on the table Cause I didn't care to be because I am too ugly Or do I have really bad P.O. Don't think I like you because you're pretty I like you because you're not a hoe And you better take it as a compliment Because in the modern day and age You are rare fine Why out getting drunk with your friends on Valentine's Day I'm at home by myself It's just a bag that fools no one I told you I would never give up I can't thought a hole in my heart to even have a heart ball Think about whether or not I deserve a chance Would your answer have been different If I just happened to be somebody else You broke my heart we care too much about what other people thought? Were we trying too hard? I honestly don't think so. I think whatever we did with an album, with Catch These Men, were necessary things to make us who we are today. Which is sort of, you know, taking the, all the learning experiences from an album, 
all the learning experiences from Catch These Men, which is probably why we would say mm. The Pen Is Mighty is probably our best album yet. Yeah. And maybe after all the experiences <laughs> from The Pen Is Mighty, maybe the I'll next I'll album forward. <laughs> might be the best one after that. <laughs> and for a very long time, I had this uh, shadow hanging over me that I would never write a song better than Pussycat. Thankfully, in 2018, we put together this album called The Pen Is Mightier. In my opinion, and I do believe that my uh, brothers will agree with me, it's our best work. And I finally wrote a song that's better than Pussycat, and it's called Delta Wing.
was always glad to count on you as co-captain. We had some great times up in the sky, but the time has come for us. Time to say good, time to say good, time to say goodbye. It's the end of your life, you've got nothing left to hide, you've got nothing. Now it's time to say goodbye. Let the visa count between the truth and the lies become nothing. Now it's time to say goodbye. There's no cloak or a sign from the earth to the sky will become nothing. Now it's time to say goodbye. Back at my experience or my journey in Kyoto Protocol so far, over 10 years now, I can probably say that it has been one hell of a journey. I'm glad we arrived at the point where we're comfortable being ourselves. Every ounce of growth that I've experienced over this past decade uh, has had the band's involvement. 
I'm living my dream. That's it. I think what excites us is, you know, when we're playing music and even just writing music, we're always thinking about the audience. Being the soundtrack of your lives, that's really the number one goal to me. The most magical moment, it's when that one song starts playing and everybody's moving together, everybody's singing together. This is the definition of hearts and, and minds as one. That song is Give Me Nothing. Everybody say Before